Thanks everyone for coming out today for the 2016 Bates Motel Comic Con panel. Yeah. I'm Terry Schwartz, I'm entertainment editor at IGN and a big fan of Bates Motel and everyone who's gonna be soon coming up onto the stage. Now I think we're all still a bit traumatized from the events of season four. It, it ended in a way we all knew was coming eventually and yet we all were hoping was never gonna happen. But still there was so much else that happened in season four that we wanna make sure you all remember it. So we're gonna show you a quick sizzle reel of everything that happened in season four and then I'm gonna welcome out the amazing cast and creators. So without further ado, all right, so the moment you've all been waiting for, let's welcome out the cast and creators. First up, Carrier and co-creator and executive producer of Bates Motel. After her, we have Carlton Cuse, co-creator and executive producer of Bates Motel. You know her best as Norma Bates, we've got Vera Farmiga. Freddie Highmore, Mr. Norman Bates himself, our resident psycho. Nestor Carbonell, Sheriff Alex Romero. And last but certainly not least, Max Terriot, who plays Dylan Massette. <laughs> now, sadly, Olivia Cook can't be here with us today. She's in production on another project, so that means that Max gets to take all our dilemma <laughs> questions alone. Um, now, we also want to let you all know something we've all Sort of known was coming, but we can officially confirm it here today. Season five will be the last season of Bates Motel, but also the best one yet, so look forward to that. We also want to just let everyone know, in case you had any worries or anything, Vera is going to be back full time as Norma Bates. You're certainly going to get your mother fix. We, what would we do without you? It just, it wouldn't be Bates Motel. Now, Carlton Carey, it was a pretty bold move to kill Norma, spoilers, if anyone is here who hasn't finished watching season four, uh, <laughs> before nope. the final season. I mean, we know in Psycho that's, that's such a key moment. So with Norma now in Norma's, Norman's head full time, what can we expect from their relationship in season five? Um, you know, we, we ha Carey and I always had a five year plan for the show and we felt like uh, as we were sort of talking about the architecture right at the very beginning that, that Norma's death at the end of season four was sort of the perfect um, pivot point and that the final season of the show would really be Norman sort of in his sort of full-blown psychopathology more like the character in the movie. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, um, Norma will not have a role. In fact, she has you know, a huge role, but, but she will be really kind of Norman's imagining of her. So there's a lot of really interesting um, issues as it relates to the kind of narrative this year and you know what's reliable and what's not reliable. And you know it's a great way for us to sort of see um, Norman kind of fighting his way through um, kind of various versions of himself and trying to find um, you know whether he can still kind of hang on to reality. Now, Vera. Season four was your last season as Norma Bates herself, not this mother identity. So looking back, what was the scene that you were just most proud of the finished product? This particular last season? Yeah. Or, or the whole series up until this point. Oh, a different one. <laughs> I'm trying to narrow it down for you. I'm trying to make it a little easier. Uh, yeah. It's so tough with her because you know the way they've, they've written her, to me, has been poetry. And you know there are times where she rhymes and times where she doesn't. Times where, you know, she's she's a Pulitzer Prize winning magnitude, and then there's there's she's a scribble sometimes. And I, I loved all of those scenes. Last is particularly last season. I would say, probably, the the moment of confession to Romero, um, because it was pages and pages of dialogue. And, and it was a very difficult thing because the audience already knows everything historically that's happened to Norma, and yet, uh, so, uh, perhaps that one? It was Did a very it? cathartic scene, though, to watch, even though we already knew anything, everything. To have her tell that story was really emotional, and, yeah. and you played it just so well. Thank you. Now, Freddie, you said that you rewatch Psycho before every season of Bates Motel. You're finally at the point where the, the show is really close to catching up with that movie. So what are you going to be looking for in Norman as you're preparing this version of the character that we're going to meet when we come back? It's tricky because it's, um, to some extent, of course, you're following that, uh, 
that psycho mythology and you're drawing from that original character. But I feel like as this has developed more and more, it's taken on its own, the characters sort of become its own thing. And as I'm sure we'll sort of touch upon later, the way that this show will end up interacting with Psycho isn't necessarily in the an expected way. And so it'll be fun to, to rewatch it, but also just to start off a whole new show, really, with getting to do some fantastic scenes with Vera as ever, but in a completely new way. And yeah, it's just, it feels like everyone's always like, oh, it's the end, it's the last season, this might be the last time you're here at Comic-Con for it. But it seems like there's so much more to go and so much more still to tell and so much left that it's uh, rebooting in a way. Yeah, it's certainly not going to be a slow final season. I think we can all, <laughs> we can all confirm that as well. Now, Nestor, uh, I think it's fair to say that we left Romero in a pretty bad spot at the end of season four. Um, not only does he have to get himself out of prison, out of the trouble that he's in, but he also has to get his revenge on, on Norman, or at least try to. So what do you think is his top priority as we're entering season five? Uh, it's hard to know. I mean, you're right. He, we left the character, you know, a, a mess. I mean, he's uh, facing incarceration. We don't know, if, you know, if he uh, if he's out on bail when we see him next or not. But I, you're right. Emotionally, he's either going to be closed off because he shut down after opening his heart to uh, to Norma, and then o only for it to be ripped out when uh, when Norma uh, kills her. But um, so either he's going to be shut down emotionally, or he's going to seek, like you said, retribution and go after this madman next to me. Well, <laughs> we're nervous. We're nervous about either direction. Um, Is there any sense of guilt on Romero's part that he was somewhat responsible? <laughs> I, no, but he, I, Norman I warned him. You know, he said, don't come too close. You're gonna, you can't get between us. So. Hey, Norman was very fair. He laid out the truth. Oh. <laughs> You were, you were absolutely fair, and you were absolutely truthful. I just didn't think you'd go through with it, but yes. <laughs> but there's time. We do have 10 episodes, right? We do have 10 episodes. Uh, now, Max, and I guess for Carlton and Carrie as well, what can you tease of sort of how Dylan and Emma are going to fit into season five, given that, that they've gotten away, at least so far, from the madness happening back, back in Pineview? <laughs> um, you know, I, I wish that I could tease something, but to be honest, I don't even know that stuff yet. So I think, uh, <laughs> I think these two down at the end would, would better be able to answer that. Um, it's, you know, Dylan left um, his family under really stressful circumstances and his, um, is the backbeat on this supposed to be that? That's, yeah. that's normal, okay. I can just hear myself, it's really <laughs> confusing. We can all hear you too, um, that's the most important part. But he um, left on such bad terms with his mother. Um, and you, you know, even though he's trying to escape, you really, you can't, you can't escape your dysfunctional family, totally, as we all know. <laughs> Max, is there any part of you, though, that wishes that Dylan just could, that, that that could be it? And then they lived happily ever after, and at least two characters got a happy ending on Big <laughs> Um I mean, yeah, but I, to be honest, I also just really enjoy getting to, to play off of, of Freddy and Nestor and stuff, so um, if, if we did run off and, and never came back, then I'd miss out on the fun of getting to act with these guys. <laughs> I think there's longing in Dylan, too, though, to fix it to, you know, not abandon his family because on some level I think he feels like he did. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think Dylan always feels like, you know, um, there's a, a sense of responsibility and, um, you know, he, he's, an, he's the older brother to Norman, so I think he always yeah. kind of takes that on himself um, to look out for his best interest and obviously sometimes they don't get along. Um, and, and sometimes uh, it's a lot worse than others, but I think that deep down inside, they obviously still have uh, a brotherly bond and love, and you know, ultimately, uh, uh, he just wants to look out for his little brother, I think. Well, season four was an interesting tipping point for Bates Motel, because you guys have written Norman to be a very sympathetic character, even though we sort of know what it's building up towards at least I've been hoping, like somehow, somehow it's, you know, it's not gonna end up with Norma's death and, and the things that we know are coming. So as we go into season five, are we as the audience supposed to start viewing Norman more as a villainous character? Or how are we supposed to keep rooting for him as, as he keeps doing these more and more terrible things? You know, ideally you wanna be on the ride with Norman because we've always been on the ride with him. 
we've, we've never been outside of him looking in. Um, and he's, you know, it's funny when you look at it from Norman's perspective, um, especially like in, when we were writing uh, episode 10 of last year, and you go, okay, well, everyone thinks my mom is dead, but I know she's not. So I have to like go plan her funeral. And all of a sudden it starts getting like a life to it that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean Norman is just—he's a—he's hu a human being who believes all this, you know. So it's like it's just, <laughs> it's just funny and fun and and fascinating to go on that ride with him. Um, and part of the goal of the season is to really create a fabulous hallucinatory mother that is a good counterpart for him. That you can get amazing scenes and has an energy and a life and is surprising. Um, and uh, dimensional, and it's been really uh, fun and to he, chart that out. Yeah, and you know, I mean, uh, tragedy is a wonderful form of storytelling, and the essence of tragedy is, is you're hoping against hope that characters don't meet their inevitable fate. Um, we very much want you to be rooting for Norman this season, and you know, it is not our intention to just end this movie exactly the way Psycho ended. That would be I think a real, you know, letdown and kind of, you know, just uninspired on our part. I mean, we are going to kind of cross through some of the mythology of the movie Psycho, but our story will have its own distinct ending that is, you know, just like our show. It's it's very much its own creation, and um, so you know, what happens to Norman is um, is not something we're going to say here, but it's it's his fate is not exactly the same as um, what is in the movie. You know, Vera, you created Norma as just this wonderful multidimensional character who, who we got to know so well. And the mother identity that you were performing is someone we've only got started getting to know in the past few seasons. We know that when we meet mother in season five, Carlton and Carrie have said that she is going to be a multidimensional character. She is going to be her own character. What are you most looking forward to in getting to build this new identity for someone who we think we know but, but probably don't know as well as we think we are? Dude, I'm still grieving. I, I'm sitting here, and the grief is so huge. And I'm like, let's move on. Come on, we got another one. And you're trying to talk about Mother Norma. And I don't know. To be honest with you, I haven't read a single page of, mm -hmm. of it, but I'm looking forward to it. But I can't. I, but I have to say, it's like a big, fat dagger in my heart right now. What are you most going to miss about Norma? <laughs> Being <Everything>. alive. <laughs> Being alive is pretty important. <laughs> now, because uh, working in front of the camera was just not enough, uh, Freddie, Nestor, and Max are all going to be directing episodes this season, in addition to acting full-time on the show. And Freddie is also going to be writing another episode this season as well. So why don't you guys go down and let us know which episodes we can expect to see each of you directing, and why was that something that you really wanted to do in season five? Let's start with you, Freddie. With the, with the numbers? <laughs> yeah, uh, with the numbers. With the numbers and the reasons. I'm going to be directing the eighth one, I believe. Uh, I think I'm directing the fifth one. Is this all right? Yeah. Am I mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm, doing the, I'm doing the fourth one. Now, why was this something that you guys wanted to do in season five? Why? I know uh, that, that, Nestor, you have done it the past two seasons, but yeah. this is your first Freddy and also your first Max. I think for me, the, both the writing and the directing were born out of a desire to be involved in the wider process on Bates Motel. And especially the writing, I think, came from this place of putting so much into the character for the entire four or five months of shooting and then feeling, I guess, as Vera is feeling now too, the same sense of like withdrawal in between and thinking, oh, but what am I, you know, wanting to be involved in that wider process and, and not, uh, and then a continuous one. And so, you know, Kerry and Carlton were both great at letting me be involved in the, in the writing and other directing. So I'm just very thankful. Yeah, for me, the, the idea of directing was really born out of what, uh, something that Vera suggested. We were, you know, we'd rehearse a few scenes here and there and block them out and sort of talk about it. And she said, you know, you really should try and direct one of these episodes. And I said, there's no way. I mean, the only thing I've directed are my kids and their little videos, you know. <laughs> but, but I did approach Carlton one day after uh, on a hiatus, and I said, 
you know, what do you think of me potentially uh, tra uh, trailing our producing director, Tucker Gates? And, and Carlton, I remember you said, you know, I think it'd be kind of interesting, it'd be kind of cool if you actually directed one. And you asked me if somebody dropped out, would I be willing to step in? And like a fool, I said yes. And <laughs> sure enough, somebody dropped out. And, and uh, you know, thanks to Universal, A&E, Carrie, and, and Carlton, and Vera, they all, you know, they took a chance on me. And, and I'm lucky enough. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just certain people, you know, you meet them and you kind of go, okay, this person has the right demeanor to direct. And it just, you know, Nestor is so thoughtful about every aspect of the show and really thinks about it in a deep and meaningful way. And it just seems so obvious to Carrie and I that he was, was, was perfectly suited to be a director and he's done a uh, amazing job and we're oh, thank you. You know, super happy to have him back doing another episode. Oh, thank you. Yes. Max, it's funny, I, I remember I was on set and talking to you and Nestor and we all, we were there and we were chatting, we we're like, why? why haven't you directed yet? Why didn't you direct an episode? And you're like, I didn't know it was an option. <laughs> so clearly you know it's an option for season five. Why was this something that was important to you? Yeah, um, you know, directing for me has been something that I've, I've, I've really been interested in since I started acting. Um, I've just kind of always been fascinated with, uh, with like how the camera works and where it goes and just kind of the relationship between the director and the actor. Um, and, you know, I guess th this seems like such a great place uh, and such a safe place to sort of mm -hmm. start in. Um, like, I know all of the actors so well and the crew, and uh, thankfully, you know, um, Carlton and Carrie and everybody at A&E and Universal were gracious enough to give me the opportunity to do it. So, obviously, um, you know, pretty big shoes to fill, I think, <laughs> after some of the other people that we've seen. Um, you know, take over the, the directing, but uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, just super excited. So now you know that at least three episodes from the, the new season are gonna be directed by these guys. Now for the cast, but, but especially for Vera and Freddie, you know, what is the most challenging thing about acting in a story that you know inevitably is building up toward a tragic ending, even if your characters might not necessarily view it as tragic? Well, I think that's it. You sort of don't. I mean, like, even just watching then, you think, oh, Norman is a loving guy. You know, he keeps <laughs> his sort of act of love. You, you kind of follow your, um, you're in that story. And you don't, you kind of know what the end is, but you're not playing that at any moment, really. You're just, you know, going about your business with your mother in whatever form that mother ends up taking. But he's... <laughs> but for me, yeah, it's always been that act of love, and I think that's the center of, their, of both of their relationships. That Maybe you shouldn't be loving so much. <laughs> <laughs> but even at the end, not to return to the, to the end of episode nine, but it, he wanted them to both go together. He didn't, it wasn't a serial killer. You know, God, when I had the ax and I could have got no. you, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be a killer. He didn't love me enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I digress, but I, I, he, is, he is a loving guy. <laughs> it's true. Is, yeah. is it any different for, for you, Nestor, or you, Max, where I think your characters would view this as a tragedy, whereas Norma <laughs> and, and Norman might just say, oh, well, you know, as you said, it's an act of love. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it is. It's heartbreaking. It's tragic. I, I remember when I got the episode, uh, episode nine, where, where Norma dies, I remember reading it, and immediately I, I couldn't I couldn't get through it without getting really choked up. And I know Carlton, you know, we talked about this when you wrote it. You and Carrie wrote it. Uh, well, you can explain what happened. But. Yeah, we, I, I was actually Carrie and I kind of traded this, were trading the script back and forth, and I was working on um, the sort of section where Norma died, and I was on a plane, and I was like crying, and people were looking at me in a very weird fashion. Um, but it's hard, you know. It's just it's, it, even when you're w when you're doing it from the objective point of view, like it's it's impossible to be that way. And I remember when Carrie and I went into the editing room and we saw the scene cut together for the first time, we were like, "Oh, we are bastards." That is <laughs> so. This is like so sad. It was so. It was just so visceral and emotional. And and even though you've kind of thought it through and we've talked about it for for four years, when you actually see it and when you do it, it was just it was like. It was just like a punch to the gut. I started being upset about it like a year and a half ago. <laughs> oh. 
I, Vera, I feel like I'm just throwing salt on the wounds with, with these questions, talking about sort of Norma's journey, but she, she loves her son. She, she loves her son. That's the one thing we know. She would do anything for her son. Um, given how it ended, do you think, looking back, she would have changed anything on the journey? Well, I think she probably would have changed many cards that were dealt to her in life, but you can't change your DNA. You know, you can't change the parents that you're, you're born into. You can't change, she couldn't change your brother. And then as a result of that was, uh, you know, her first marriage her, and, and, and all of these abusive relationships, I think, really contributed to this terror in, in her life. I mean, like if she was standing at the pearly gates and G.O.D. was, you know, you know, was considering her entrance, I, I think perhaps, I think it's amazing, though, that that terror did not contribute to, you know, she, that she wasn't a cruel or, or a weak person as a result of that terror. Well, not at all times, I mean. I don't think she is weak. Okay, She's maybe she would brave. have taken back. She's like, scared, she gets scared. But the cruelty, I'm just saying, maybe, at maybe, what she, maybe she could have taken back like the clobbering of Mr. Real Estate Guy. That was a bit excessive. No, that yeah. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. That's, that's the one the thing. That God likes. That's the only thing. The one thing she would take back. <laughs> Poor sign. <laughs> I don't know. I don't she, know if she would have changed anything. I think. Um, yeah, I think. I think perhaps she might have. Hmm. I'm right mm. here. I think her, I, think, <laughs> I know, hun. I think her, you know, she had so much growth and so much illumination. She was so illuminated in terms of yeah. her denial and being able to find her voice. And I think that her tongue froze up there at the end, you know, and I think she, she would have probably in hindsight admitted to the fact that she does not know how to fix her kid. Yeah, maybe that. I like that. That's a great answer. Thank you. Now, Max, Dylan is faced with his own very tragic realization of when the one time he finally separated himself from his family, that was when his, his brother ended up killing his mother. Um, obviously, you haven't, you haven't seen any script pages. These two know what's going to happen. We don't know yet. But what, are you, what do you think is going to be most interesting, and what are you sort of most looking forward to about that moment when he does eventually find out that his mother died and, and under these sort of suspicious circumstances? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, that, I think that he's obviously, I mean, he's going to feel a lot of things. I think um, he's kind of even though he's sort of always been rejected, he's kind of always tried to be there. And so I think he's gonna feel some guilt and some responsibility because it's like the one time when he's like, you know what, I have to, I have to cut myself off and I have to leave. And then he comes back, you know, to find out that his mom is gone. Um, I think that it's, it's, kind of, it's gonna be devastating to him. I think um, also just kind of on terms of how they left off and how their relationship kind of ended. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's going to break his heart. I think it's going to be really, really tragic for him. And I think um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a lot of, uh, I guess, difficult scenarios and situations for him to sort of navigate through and figure out how to deal with, uh, with Norman, um, with, uh, with uh, the sheriff. Um, I was going to say Nestor, but Alex Romero. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's going to be sad. I think it's going to be really sad. Um, and then also kind of going back to, you know, f kind of realizing that this is like the end of Norma. For me, it's also, I mean, it's obviously, it's really sad not to be seeing Norma on screen anymore. But also on like a personal level, it, it was really sad, sort of this realization of that's probably the last scenes that I'm gonna have with Vera, you know, um, I don't know, that Nestor's gonna have with Vera, and it's getting, getting to work with Vera for the past four years has been like such an amazing and just like loving experience, and so for that to kind of come to an end, not just on a show level, but um, on like a, a creative acting level, is, it sucks. I mean, it's, it's sad, you know? I think that's the first time I just realized, too, that that's what that means. And 
and that, that is heartbreaking. So not to shift gears too dramatically, but let's, let's share some exciting news, some happy news. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about who will eventually play the character of Marion Crane on, on Bates Motel, a very iconic character from Psycho, uh, Carlton and Carrie. Do you have any, any news, any announcements to share with us on that front? Yeah, I mean, you know, this was a this was a big thing. As I said, you know, we're 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 not we're doing our own version of the story, and yet we wanted to kind of cross in and out of some of the mythology from the movie. So we have very much, uh, you know, wanted Marion Crane, who's so iconic in in Psycho, to be a part of our story. But we wanted her to be very much our own character, and we felt. In order to do that, we needed to find someone who was very, very special to play Marion. And we think we have done that. And um, I think rather than um, me telling you who that's going to be, we're going to let her tell you herself. So roll. Let's, 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 let's roll. Her. Let's roll it. No, that's legit. That's legit. Rihanna is playing Marion Crane in Bates Motel season five which is crazy. Carlton, how did this come to happen? I mean, that's why we, why we really wanted to have a video so you would actually believe it. Um, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it at first. Um, and then you said no. You know, uh, I had actually, I read this article in which she, uh, she said that she was a fan of Bates Motel. And, you know, Carrie and I were talking and we were like, I mean, what, a, what about Rihanna? She's a fan of the show. And uh, so we asked and she said yes. It was... <laughs> It was awesome. I mean, we're really excited about it. You know, it really feels like, um, you know, very much the, a kind of a version of the character that's very different than the movie and we think is going to be incredibly special. Well, to the cast, what, what are you most looking forward to about having Rihanna on your show in this very, very iconic role? Well, being able to talk about it, because we haven't been able to talk about it for a long time. It's been such a secret, it feels weird to actually speak. You know, you're like, what? You you're allowed. You're allowed out in out. front of yeah. all these people. No, it's going to be great to work, work, work with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, guys, before we turn it over to fan questions, I did want to talk a little bit about the happier side of season four. We had two incredible romances on the show that really culminated in, in ways that I think a lot of fans were looking forward to. Uh, now, for, for Carrie and Carlton, what was interesting about the Romero and Norma relationship is that that's something that also sort of was drawn from Psycho. We know that Norma was in a relationship when Norman killed her. Obviously, you had Nestor from the beginning. At what point did you realize he's going to be that guy for us? He's going to be that character? Probably around the end of season one. There was just such a great chemistry between them. Um, was... We agree. Yeah. You know, when you make a TV show, it's a very organic thing, and you listen to the show, you watch what the actors do, you see the relationships that unfold, and you don't really want to impose your will to the nth degree. You, can, you listen to the show, and, the, and there was so much chemistry between them that Carrie and I started talking, like, wow, this is something that eventually we need to kind of um, explore on a, on a much uh, deeper level. Now, for Nestor, they figured it out at the end of season one. At what point did you find out that, and, and for Vera as well, at what point did you two find out that these characters were going to end up together? I, I'm so naive. I assumed it was from the pilot. I, <laughs> but no, I, 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 think I, no I, I think I knew right around the end of season one that, uh, that it was heading that direction. Certainly after I killed Abernathy and, and her response to, to it, um, it, it looked like it was headed that way. But there was a lot of, obviously, push-pull in between, and, and finally this year uh, the relationship was, was consummated. And I loved what, what Carrie and Carlton did. I mean, they, they sort of backed into the love, uh, two, you know, one step forward, two steps back, and, until eventually, or was it the other way, two steps forward, <laughs> one step back, until eventually we met. Um, but no, it was, it was, uh, it was great to, to be in that until, of course, it, it all went to pot. <laughs> I know, Max. Dylan and Emma has just been another a joy to watch unfold and really a, a sweet and almost innocent part of season four. What did you most enjoy about playing that with Olivia and getting Dylan to experience that? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I just think it's, you know, it's, they say, kind of seem like such an opposite couple in the beginning. But I, I think, you know, that being said, um, they both kind of always felt like outsiders to this relationship that Norma and Norman had. 
Um, and then obviously there, there kind of just came a time where it was sort of like they saw each other for the first time and, um, and they both kind of realized that it just made sense. You know, I think that neither one of them saw it coming. Um, They've both been outsiders too yeah. for, for a long time outside of the Norman Norman. Um, so it was kind of cool that they found each other out there. I agree. All right. Well, we do we do have some time for fan questions. If you have a question, we have this microphone over here. Please get in line. And, oh. and our first question, you rushed right up there. You deserved it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I really wanted to ask about uh, the five-year plan that you mentioned before. I know with cast changes and once you get to know your cast, things ultimately can change from what your first plan was. So I was wondering if you could share with us any examples of things that maybe weren't what you envisioned seeing from the beginning of the show that ended up happening, couplings, you know, anything that happened. Um, Dylan and Emma. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, the Dilla, Dylan and Emma relationship, as Carrie said, and also I think, you know, we didn't have a preconceived plan that, that Norma and Romero were going to get together. Those were, you know, we cast the show and then we just, as, as we saw those relationships unfold and we felt like those were, were really, um, you know, great, you know, kind of there was great chemistry in both areas, and so we really wanted to write to that. Um, and then obviously, you know, certain things happen. You know, we had to recast Emma's father because that actor wasn't available. So sometimes that's not a it's not a fun thing to have to do. But you know, we we really wanted that character, and the original actor wasn't available because he was doing another project. And so, you know, there's things that happen like that. But fortunately, by and large, I think you know we've really had the benefit of making the show that we've wanted to make and. Um, explore the relationships and the stories unfolded the way we, we planned. Great, thank you. Thanks. Hi, really quickly, thank you very much for making such an awesome show. I've been going through some rough times, so that's really helped me get through, so oh, I appreciate wow. that. Thank you. Thank so you. really quickly, this is for Freddie. Um, how difficult is it for you to build this character that's already been established? Are you like, great, I'm gonna watch Psycho again, I got something to build off, or like, ooh, I got something really big to build off of? I guess I never felt the weight of expectation at the beginning. Maybe I should have, but I, I mean, I didn't, wasn't that I took it lightly, but um, it seemed like we'd created this whole new world, so there was less of pressure to have the character link right back to that original interpretation. And I think, I mean, I've always felt, and especially coming back here, actually doing this panel, which is the third time we've done one here, you realize that people coming back talking about their shows on other shows must get a little bored because they ask about the character and the character hasn't really moved on. You know, this show's still going, but the character's still the same. But on this, every single year, there's been such a development from all of the characters. And partly that links into that sense of tragedy and knowing where you're gonna go and you have to keep on building. But it's always changed and always moved forward and evolved. And that's just been incredibly exciting to play. Cool. As Thanks. opposed to feeling that you're just stuck in this in a, in a rut or with a character that doesn't move on. Everyone, I mean, if you think back to all of our characters way back at the beginning and how far, as you saw at the beginning, you know, how far we've come now, it's, it's sort of extraordinary. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, next question. All right, so phenomenal job on this season, you guys. So my question is for Mr. Highmore. What was it like for you and that relationship with Norman against his doctor? Because that's one of the most complex relationships in that season. I know, I mean, he was, Damon, who played Dr. Edwards, was absolutely incredible. Yes. And so engaged, I mean, I feel like he, to a large extent, he makes those scenes because he has, on paper, not little to do in, a, in any demeaning way, but he doesn't speak very much, and so much is told through his looks and his, the way that he listens and how he listens so actively, as opposed to ever checking out and, and throwing in the odd line. And I think that without him, that relationship really would, would not have worked at all. And, and I, those scenes as well, um, which are in large part to do with the way Kerry and Carlton wrote them, us really got into depth. They're almost like a play at times. You know, they'd be these like five, six page scenes that they allowed to breathe and to uh, resist what I imagine is the temptation in TV with always cutting for time to sort of chop it up and, and allowed those moments of transition to take place when Norman goes from himself into mother. So it always remains believable and trusting in those silences as opposed to 
removing them. So I think you know credit goes to both of those two. And and, well, and, I, I, and especially to Kerry. I mean, you know, um, it is really really hard in television to write a five or six page scene that will sustain the audience's interest. And and um, you know she. Carrie wrote some amazing scenes, and you know the instinct when you have when you're kind of working on the scripts is to try to kind of pare them down, and you kind of have this feeling, you know, when you're doing this sort of superstructure of an episode about keeping things moving, and it would just, you know, we we would look at these scenes, and and I would just say, you know, no, 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 we're doing this entire scene verbatim. It was so good, and then to see them in in, in Freddie and Damon's hands was just, uh, it was just fantastic. It's some of the most fun you can have as a uh, as a as a showrunner is to see you know to take a risk to do something that's that long and and complex and and see that it actually does work and holds the uh, holds the audience's interest. Great question. Thank you. Hi. Oh, you look so good. <laughs> I love your hair. I love your dress. <laughs> I love it so much. Hello, mother. <laughs> I've been lying around Comic-Con all day taking pictures dead, by the way. <laughs> um, my question is for you, actually. How did you play a dead body so incredibly convincingly well? Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. There are a couple of cast members on this panel who will remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> who called me easy money. That was not me. <laughs> that was not me. During those two episodes. <laughs> That, that was, it wasn't me, honestly. <laughs> no, no, but in all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mister, oh, I love Norma. Oh, she's so great. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to it. Easy money. Yeah. But, but, but interesting question because, um, because stillness is, is hard that to be um, so still. And I, I found that I would be thrown into a panic if I actually had to hold my breath. But um, so every scene, um, it was a matter of shallow breathing. So I'm actually breathing in all those scenes, but so shallowly. And it, get, it would take me about 40 minutes to get into it. And I, it's just a matter of hovering over sleep. You're still very conscious, but I, I can do that. Um, and that's the state that I got in. And of course, once the contacts come in, it was even much easier for me. I've had LASIK, and so I actually... Um, it's really hard when they put, when we had to do press and they put wind machines in my face, they always scold me because I can't like leave it open. So those contacts really also helped uh, with, um, with not blinking. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome, thank you. And was that you as well, Vera? Yes, that, that well, is me. Well, I imagine that, you know, it's, it's not much easier to do that sitting up, but you play a great dead body. Thank so you. round of applause, round of applause. All right, next question. Hi, um, I just want to say I love you guys, love your show. Uh, Freddie, you're awesome. Uh, Thank you. Max, I have a question for you. Um, do you uh, still keep in contact with uh, Corbin Blue and Kristen Stewart from Catch That Kid, or do you just try to block that out? <laughs> I do, yeah, I do. Um, I raced against Corbin in like the Long Breach uh, pro celeb race. So I got, to, I got to catch up with him, and then Kristen and I talk uh, quite a bit. We're, we're, we're close still, so. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Hi, I love you guys. I'm, um, I just wanted to ask a question to the directors because I'm, an act, I'm a student actress, which I will be talking about diversity in um, another panel next week. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, like, um, did, was there any, like, uh, did you choose to have like a blinded casting for the um, um, the lady I forgot in that that uh, Rihanna's playing? Marion Marion Crane. Marianne Crane. Crane. Yeah. Um, did, did you guys choose like color casting beforehand too, or like, or just in general, never cared for any diversity or like racial ideas? I just it it helps me because it gives me hope like for future if like they don't care if I'm Asian or not then no. I can still be a character even though it's like maybe I'm like supposed to be a Latina and I'd be like hi I'm Asian. <laughs> we always try to be completely open with the casting. Um, the Marion Crane happened a little different because the idea to 
approach Rihanna came before anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's really an it's an exciting opportunity to reinvent the character um, in a truly new way in a contemporary world. And, and you know, and when we when we cast most parts, they're really they're the 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 casting calls are open to all all different types of people, and we we look at lots of different choices when we we make our casting selections. Um, right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Cool shirt. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Hello, um, I wanted to ask, um, I've been lucky enough to actually get to ask you guys a question at every panel like each year. And um, I hope it's not the last, honestly, because I love the show so much. And I usually just get nervous and wind up asking a question about Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this year I wanted to ask something kind of important. I've never actually been to Canada and me and my mom are trying to plan a trip. Um, do the producers know um, when the hotel will be torn down? Because oh. I really would like to see it before so it's gone. Dark. I know, that's such that's a sad horrible. thing. <laughs> it's, it's, um, the knife. it's really macabre. It's, Please it's, don't tell me it's already gone. I really want to go. It's, it's, um, it's actually built on a, um, a landfill yeah. that used to be a trash dump in a town <laughs> called Aldergrove, uh, which is south of Vancouver. And uh, it's there. Um, it's very during, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, you, it's the, we built the house, and then we built the, the motel um, between seasons. They uh, they wrap it up so that uh, and there's guards and a gate and stuff so that it doesn't get overrun by people. The yeah. the road in front has a lot of skid marks on it for people who have been you know <laughs> when we're shooting during the season they drive down they're like what hurt <laughs> like and uh, it looks so real. I mean it totally really does look like yeah. you could just check into the motel. I mean it is all the road. yeah it's all to, it's all to scale in there so. Um, I guess if you get yourself up to um, to Vancouver before um, end of January, the end of January, it'll it'll be there. This you year, can drive by it on yeah. the road. Yeah. Okay. Well, I need. I've never been able. I know it's just right over the border from Washington, and I need to visit Snoqualmie too to see the town from Twin Peaks, and they're real close. So hopefully, yeah. I can there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Good okay. Trip. We'll see you there. there Thank you, you so much. Well, the standing Bye. set it is amazing, and it does look like an actual motel. If you didn't, for whatever crazy reason, know what Bates Motel is, have you ever had any people who actually tried to check in? <laughs> we had a uh, we had a reporter from the New York Times who spent the night there, and uh, but it's not a functioning motel, so you know he was uh, he had to kind of rough it. And uh, then there's also coyotes because across <laughs> the street there is a working trash dump, and. Uh, <laughs> So, and there's also like sometimes when the wind is blowing the wrong direction, it smells kind of bad. So uh, it's not really probably where you want to stay. It <laughs> looks far better on television. So not many people out driving by saying, oh, hey, a motel, cool. I'm just going to stop on this random street. I, I would there. bet someone, I would bet people <laughs> have because it really does look real. Although at night is when it looks like the most amazing with the, with the, the light. Sign, yeah. And, yeah. And, the and, sign. and there's always a film crew when that's there. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so don't try and check in. But I wish someone would just take that amazing um, structure and move it. <laughs> <laughs> or renovate it. Yeah. All right. So, Honey, but, you know we could do that and make a killing. <laughs> didn't you try and visit with Wait, a we tried friend that one. once? And they didn't let you in? Yeah. Okay. They were like, no, you can't come here. It's for a TV show. <laughs> You're like, yes, I'm on this. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> they banned you from your own home. Yeah. All right, so, <laughs> so we have time for a couple more questions. Hi, my question's for Max, and I was wondering, as Dylan, would you ever forgive Norman for what he did, or would you join Romero and take him out? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> that was harsh. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> take that's him a, out. It's a, really good, it's, a, it's a really good question, though. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if 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 that's something that can ever really be forgiven. You know, I think um, I think that there 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 comes a time when uh, yeah, you can you can only let somebody go so far. You know, and and I, and I think that while maybe he might have a hard time. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. That's a really good question. Do you think I'm totally Dylan would have any guilt about the fact that he left when he uh, sort of knew stuff, but he didn't want to look too close? I think. Yeah, I think he'll totally have guilt. Um, I think that you know he'll the rest of his life he'll probably live 
you know, wondering what he could have done or if he could have done anything or yeah. if he had stayed or if he had, you know, stood up to his mom and said, no, this is what we have to do. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think that it's something that he's going he's gonna to live with and it's going to weigh on him the rest of his life. Uh, so, yeah. Tempers, yeah, tempers anger. But you'll, you'll get more information uh, definitely about this uh, in the upcoming season. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get your answer fully eventually. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. Hi, I love all of you, mm. just so you know. <laughs> um, my question is for Freddie. Um, with the many versions of Norman, from his climax all the way to when he fully goes blackout, Norma. Um, which is your favorite or more most passionate about that you spent mo the most energy to come out with? It's uh, it's tricky. I I really enjoy it when Norman is performing, and when he's when he thinks, because he does know, he does get people on a, on a deep level, but when he thinks that he's cleverer than everyone else and kind of goes around like in 10 thinking, oh God, like these crazy funeral people think she's dead, but I gotta, you know, I'll just go along with it and say, oh yeah, of course she's dead, but I'm actually gonna get her back. Um, I like it when he's, it just makes me laugh. The times when, for example, Romero comes in and he just gets out the ring and thinks like, oh, I'm gonna challenge yeah, yeah. you back. You know, the sort of pissy Norman, mm -hmm. but, also, but also a righteousness behind it that, <laughs> that is kind of true. It's um, really funny. But it's, yeah, I enjoy, the, I enjoy the humorous. When he pretends and people see straight through it, he tries to lie to people and they just, they know immediately that he's trying to <laughs> pretend, but he thinks he's got away with it and thinks he's done really well. Awesome, thank you thank so much. You. <laughs> Great question. Yeah, really. We do all enjoy watching it, just <laughs> as much as you enjoy playing it. Hi, it's so cool that I can ask this directly. Um, mine's for Vera. At the end of season two, Norma kisses Norman, and I've been wondering the entire time, was that incestuous, or what was that about? Like, like I, mean, I mean, like, what, what, <laughs> what, what was she trying to... <laughs> What was she trying to, to get through to Did Norman you want it to be? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a last measure for her. She had to plant something on him that would stick mm -hmm. and really get through to him because he was suicidal in that moment. And that kiss sealed the deal. She said she would be by him his, in, uh, the entire time and help him through, through the darkness. This question wasn't awkward as I thought it was going to be, so thank you. <laughs> 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 All right, and I think we have time for one more question. Hi. Um, my question is kind of before Norma dies, because I'm still in season three. <gasps> oh, baby. Oh. Well, we're very Whoops. sorry we spoiled that for you. Oh, no. <laughs> So was there ever a moment Norma feared for her life because of what her son was going through? Yes, I, th I think as a parent, um, you just squash that fear. Absolutely. Yes, there were desperate moments of, of fear. But, it, I mean, her main priority all these years has just to make him the best possible version of himself. And so, uh, as a parent, you just stomp on it and chin up and, and try to make him better in whatever way she felt she could. Well, on that note, thank you all so much for coming here today. Bates Motel season four, amazing season, and we look forward to seeing what you guys bring back for season five. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Norman? I want my mother. Norman is getting worse. Now, either she's insane or you are. <laughs>